Welcome back to America's Now, on location in Indonesia. He's a billionaire CEO turned politician who's owned a credit card company and a cable television network. He's also had major holdings in a hospital, airline, and soccer team. His name is Sebastian Piñera, and today he is the president of Chile. Since he took office, his country has endured earthquakes, wildfires, student protests, and a massive mining accident that gained worldwide attention. Through it all, his government has maintained a surging economy. President Piñera is here in Bali. I had a chance to ask him a few questions about Chile here at the APEC summit. Mr. President, Chile has the largest number of free trade agreements in Latin America, which has been very beneficial to your country. What do you make of summits, conferences, gatherings like APEC? Do you think it's been beneficial to Chile? Definitely, yes. We do have free trade agreements with more than 60 countries around the world. Europe, the U.S., China, Japan, and many others. In this trip, we signed an agreement with Thailand, and we started negotiation with Indonesia. So basically, we are still expanding our free trade network because for a small country like Chile, free trade means development, creation of jobs, improving salaries, and getting a better quality of life for the Chilean people. I'd like to ask you about Chile's relationship with China. How do you see the future development in the Chinese economy? Are you confident about China's future economy? We are. China has proved that it's a real engine of growth. And even though it's not growing at 10% or more, it's still growing at 7%, which is a very good growth rate. And China has become by far the largest trading partner for Chile. And the same thing with APEC. More than two out of three dollars that we export goes to APEC countries. And the same thing happens with imports and investments. Therefore, for us, APEC is a very important meeting, and we are working very hard in the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which might become the largest free trade zone in the world, and also in the Pacific Alliance, which is a very new but very successful alliance between Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Chile, which is going very, very well. Well, the TPP is something that everyone around the world is talking about. Uh, what are your thoughts on how that is progressing? Well, we have made a lot of progress, but of course, we are entering the uh, last stages, which are the most difficult ones, because we have to deal now with very sensible issues like intellectual property, government procurements, uh, environment. But we hope that we will be able to close an agreement before the end of this year. That's our target, and we are working for that. China is lowering its development rate to a slower speed. How do you see it? Well, it's natural. You cannot grow at 10 percent forever. But the important thing is that China is not only growing, at the same time, I think it's strengthening future growth. Because we had a chance to talk to the president of China yesterday, and he was telling us all the plans that they are putting together, because China is not only the second largest economy in the world, it's also by, by now the largest trading partner of most APEC countries. And therefore, we, we hope that China will keep growing, because that will be a real engine for world growth. Well, I want to ask you about uh, trade ties between Chile and China, and how do you see the future of trade ties between these two countries? Well, trade ties between China and Chile have been extremely close and fruitful. We have diplomatic relations with China for more than 40 years. Chile was the first Latin American country in signing a free trade agreement with China, and therefore we are working very hard because uh, our economies are very complementary. But as I was... Uh, talking with a Chinese president, we are now facing new challenges, environment, and at the same time, a climate change. And therefore, it's very important for China and all the economies in the world to realize that we will have to address these new problems and challenges together, because otherwise, we won't be successful. Staying on the economy, you know, under your leadership, the economy in Chile has really surged. It's really grown. Looking back as your time in office draws near, would you consider yourself a better businessman or a better president? It's hard to evaluate yourself, but it's true that the Chilean economy is doing very well. Chile was the poorest Spanish colony in Latin America and now has become the country with the highest 
per capita income in Latin America, but we have a very ambitious goal. Today, Chile has a 20,000 per capita income. Our target is to become the first, hopefully not the only, Latin American country able to overcome underdevelopment and defeat poverty. That's what we're working for, and we are going the right direction at, at the right speed. Well, then, would it be appropriate for some people to say that you are the billionaire businessman who turned poverty around in your country? Well, I started as an academician, as a university professor, then I became an entrepreneur, and now I am a politician because I think that in politics, you can change not only your own life, you can change the life of the Chilean people. And for me, that's the most important thing. You know, uh, you've had a lot happen in your country recently, and everyone around the world remembers you as a president who directed those rescue operations to save those Chilean miners who spent so long underground. What would you like to be remembered for? Well, that was a very emotional moment because our commitment with the search and rescue of our miners was a very difficult one. For a long period of time, we never, we didn't know where they were, we didn't know whether they were dead or alive, but we kept our faith alive and we did everything possible, not only to find them, but only also to rescue them alive. And when we did that, that was a real message for the world that faith, hope works. And what started as a possible tragedy ended as a real blessing. Do you feel like you have accomplished everything that you've set out in your term? Of in course not. But we have accomplished a lot. What were our main commitment? To recover our growth capacity, to recover our leadership and dynamism. Chile was growing very little, was not creating enough jobs. Now we are among the fastest growing country in the world. We have been able to create almost one million new jobs, which is incredible because our labor force when we started was only seven million jobs. So we have accomplished a lot in terms of growth, in wages, employment, and also in terms of undertaking huge reforms in the educational sector and health sector. But of course, you can never accomplish everything you want. That's life. We are humans. We are not uh, able to accomplish everything in this world. But if you had more time, what would you do? Many, many more things. First of all, to achieve the goal of becoming a developed country without poverty, with more equality of opportunity, a country which is more free and at the same time more fair in terms of social justice. But if I had to mention two things that we think that we have to move uh, faster and, and, and further is a pension reform and to win the war on crime, which is something which is very difficult, but we have to keep fighting crime because that's something that the Chilean society really needs. Well, Mr. President, it sounds like you still have a lot you would like to do. Do you think or will you run for president again in 2017? I don't know. Who knows whether we are going to be alive or, or dead. Today, I'm really concentrating all my efforts in finishing this government, we still have six months to go, and to finish it well, to really consolidate our growth process, consolidate our major reforms in the educational sector and the health sector. At the same time, we are working very hard in trying to improve the quality of our democracy. So there are so many things to do from now until March next year that I'm concentrating 100% on that and not in what will happen in 2017. Mr. President, it was an honor to speak with you. Thank you so much for making some time to be with us. Thanks a lot.